There has been a lot of chatter about vitamin A in both legacy as well as social media since the start of the measles outbreak in Texas. Now, I've been using vitamin A therapeutically, both on the first signs of illness as well as before vaccines in my practice for over 25 years. So let's talk about it. Hey, everybody. I'm Dr. David Berger, a board-certified pediatrician in Tampa, Florida. I've been using vitamins and other types of supplements for over 25 years in my practice, and it's a mainstay of my therapies that I offer people. Now, what I'm presenting to you today, though, this is general information. It's for educational purposes only, and this is not in place of a doctor-patient relationship or any medical provider for that matter. Each person is unique. Please consult with your healthcare provider for any type of specific advice to your case or to your child's case. Now also, high dose vitamin A, like I'm gonna be discussing today, should never be taken long term. It's only for the short burst and it can cause problems, which I'll get into later. But I also do recognize that vaccination is a personal choice. And and by far the best way of preventing measles disease, both in an individual as well as spreading it throughout a community is through the MMR vaccine. Now, if you like what you hear here, please subscribe, please like it, please share it to other people. We really want to get the message out. And if you want even more details about the various immune protocols, the specific things that I do from everything from COVID to coughs to colds, please sign up for our Patreon because I, I put all of the details of all of those protocols there. Now, in terms of vitamin A, I first, besides learning about what on the package labels of foods were just as how much vitamin A in it, I first learned about vitamin A in medical school, where for a grand total of about 10 minutes in our nutrition course was it discussed. And we learned about how it was important for vision. And we learned that if a person took too much vitamin A, there's something called hypervitaminosis A that can cause damage to livers, that it can actually cause softening of young children's skulls and it can cause increased intracranial pressure, pressure inside the brain that can lead to really serious types of symptoms. Now, in terms of how to use vitamin A clinically, this is something I first learned about from Dr. Eric Ridlin, who was the OG, the very first holistic pediatrician in the state of Florida. I was the second. But this goes back to 1998 when he invited me to his office and just to shadow him for the day to learn about what he was doing because I was interested, but he's the one who had the experience and I wanted to learn his protocols. So he shared with me that the World Health Organization and the CDC had a specific high dose two day vitamin A protocol that was being used for measles. He also suggested that he uses it for all different types of infections he and I don't think he had seen measles, but this is something he would suggest for it, but also for any type of infection whatsoever on the first signs of illness. Now, the specific information, the specific dosing that is recommended from the CDC up until this day for children under six months of age, if they get exposed to or have measles, 50,000 units per day for twice a day for two days. I meant to say 50,000 units per day for two days for children six to 12 months of age, the recommendation is 100,000 units per day for two days. And over a year of age, 200,000 units of vitamin A per day for the two days. Now, I've been using this as part of my immune support protocol since then, and it has been incredibly important and helpful. And time and time again, I have found from patients that if they skipped the vitamin A or they ran out of vitamin A, they forgot about it, the kids typically got more sick. And they would tell me, ah, that was the one time, but I promise I'll always use it again. Of course, the promise they should be making is to their family, to their kids, to do it. And vitamin A does have a bitter taste to it. So if you're especially doing it in the drop form for kids, putting it what we call a honey spoon by putting a little bit of honey and then the vitamin A on top of it, the drops, and then more honey on top to let them lick it off. That's kind of could be a good way of masking it if the kid doesn't like the taste of vitamin A. Now, I also use these starting the day before vaccines because we know that it's coming, especially if it's a live virus vaccine like MMR or chickenpox. And I'll do the exact same dosings that I've mentioned starting the day before, the day of, and actually for one more day, the day after, because I want it to be there 
be- once it's once the vaccines in the system, because again, and as I'll explain why, th- th- that this is something that I want there to support the body. And again, this is something that you should check with your healthcare provider on. Again, technically, since it's for three days, not two days, this is beyond what the CDC recommendation is. But I also know that for three days, it's also not going to cause hypervitaminosis A. But again, you do not want to use those these types of doses long term. Now, in addition, vitamin A has a recommended daily allowance, the amount that people should be taking. And if people get exposed to measles or get measles, if they are vitamin A deficient, they're significantly more likely of a chance that they're going to get bad case of measles and have some of the more terrible things that can happen from it. So the recommended daily allowance is between 1,250 to 2,500 units for children and for people over five. 5,000 units. That's the most that a person should be doing. And that from a point of ref- reference, the uh, what's called the adult daily upper tolerable unit for adults is 10,000 units. And again, much lower, lower amounts than what I'm quoted for what the CDC says for the use of measles. Now, also, you are now seeing vitamin A, instead of just being done in units, being reported in micrograms called retinol activity equivalent MCG. Each 1,000 units of vitamin A is the equivalent of 300 micrograms of the vitamin A. So 10,000 units, 3,000 micrograms, 100,000 units, 30,000 micrograms, etc. But also be aware that this is specifically talking about whole form vitamin A. People will interchangeably use beta carotene and vitamin A equivalently. And that's actually not precisely so because not all people can convert beta carotene to vitamin A. In fact, that's one of the things that we look at from the genetics is to see if they have the ability to. But if you use the whole form of vitamin A, that will always get you there. And that includes whether it's for the synthetic form, which is called vitamin A palmitate. There's also an acetate form or whether it's from cod liver oil. But if you're doing it from cod liver oil, make sure that it is something that is molecularly distilled and being tested to make sure that there's not mercury and other toxins in there. Now, in terms of how does vitamin A work, it has a cup, it has a few very important functions. The first thing is that it maintains what's called mucosal barriers. So on our respiratory tract, as well as our GI tract, we have what's called the mucosa. It's the outer lay, layer of those, of those tracts, the, and it's made out of kind of cell called epithelial cells. And these cells are very tightly bound together, and they serve as a barrier to stopping other types of infections and other things from getting into our system. Now, vitamin A is critical for the health of those epithelial cells and, and of course, therefore, the, the health of the lining of these systems. Now, measles can cause damage to the lining of these systems, and that can lead to secondary infections, as I said, getting through. Now, adequate vitamin A does help keep the barrier intact, and it reduces those complications, but also it can help repair, and that's why we suggest using it for high doses for those two days to help with any additional repair that's needed. Now, the vitamin A also has immune regulation from what we call mo- it's a modulation, and it, it turns out that it affects the function of certain types of blood cells, white blood cells called regulatory T cells. They are important for the immune response, but also helping that the immune responses doesn't go overboard to creating a hyperinflammatory state. It reduces excessive inflammation. It also boosts the function of B cells, another type of lymphocyte, and these are needed to make antibodies that fight off infections, and the vitamin A helps to improve those, that production. There's other types of white blood cells called macrophages and lymph and neutrophils, and they are essential in helping the body get rid of the infection itself. In addition, Vitamin A is a very powerful antioxidant. So oxidative stress is what happens as part of the immune response when a person's fighting off the infection. And of course, if there's all this inflammation that's happening to fight it off, there's more oxidative stress, which can cause more cellular damage. And so the vitamin A serves to protect against that. 
In addition, the vitamin A helps support healing after the fact with infections, and it promotes cellular repair and regeneration of those cells. And that's critical because, of course, if measles are damaging those cells, we need to repair them as quickly as possible. Now, some precautions. Do not use high-dose vitamin A during pregnancy. It's which referred to as a teratogen. It can cause... Um, it can cause... Um, breakage of, of of some of those cells it can cause um birth defects and so of course a woman should who's pregnant should be using 5000 units of vitamin a not more in order for their overall function that can be helpful again from protecting against more severe causes of viruses now also again hypervitaminosis a does not happen when it's just used for those couple of days it has to be long term use now but that is a concern, so please don't misunderstand this to say one should be taking high-dose vitamin A for long periods of time. Now, if people do have severe liver disease, the liver is what breaks down vitamin A. And if you can't break it down, you are much closer to developing hypervitaminosis A because then it's there. But also if you have severe kidney disease, this can, this can impact vitamin A metabolism and again can increase the toxicity. Ooh, part of a hiccup there. <laughs> but in conclusion, vitamin A can be very effective for fighting off measles as well as almost every other type of infection. And that's why I recommend using it. In fact, I tell my patients, if you ask yourself, should you start vitamin A in the first sign of illness, you've answered the question because the answer is always yes. Now, thanks for watching, of course, and I will be sharing more information about all of this stuff as we go forward. I do have a feeling that the measles issue is going to be going on for a while. So if there's anything new to report, I'll bring it to you. Have a nice day.